Alright, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a video about Joe Bi one, Joe Biden falling again and his candidacy for the 2024 campaign. So, Joe Biden collapsed on stage once again. What else is new? He was doing some sort of event with a bunch of Navy SEALs or some, uh, some military branch, I'm not sure exactly which. But he finished his speech, and of course he was babbling and mumbling as always, and then he went to shake somebody's hand or, or walk off stage, and this is what happened. Up here he goes, and down he goes again. And yeah, he actually needs to be helped up this time. He, he can't walk off on his own power. And the media showed great and deep concern for our president. And th the thing about this is, though, is there are some people in the media that are like, oh my god, you're not allowed to laugh at this. It's not funny. Don't laugh at it. He's a senile old man. You can't, you're, you can't make fun of him. Here's the thing. If he were to fall over and break a hip, it wouldn't be funny. If he just stumbled over like he did and rolled around and slowly got back up, I mean, yeah, it is kind of funny. I mean, if he just... It's one thing if you have like an actual disability, something that's preventing you from doing a certain thing, from performing certain physical activities, and you get seriously hurt. That's not funny. Biden's just senile. So when he stumbles and falls over, you're allowed to laugh at it. It's okay. It's funny. You could either take that route, but then you also, if you're the media, you have to acknowledge that, yeah, he actually is pretty old and maybe he shouldn't run again. Maybe he should debate. Maybe that's why he's running away from debates. By the way, the media hasn't really touched upon at all the fact that Robert Kennedy and Marion Williamson have challenged Joe Biden in the primary. And that's because they love Joe Biden because he's a corporate Democrat. That's what he is. You know, he's he, he as we know, he's corrupt. We know the whole situation with him and his son and Burisma. You know, I'm sure you guys have all heard about that. We've all been through that. And that's why the media doesn't talk about it, because they love that side of Joe Biden. They love those corporate Democrats. That's why they ignore people like Bernie Sanders, Marion Williamson, you know, RFK. The list goes on and on. They just they, they won't criticize them. But I mean, they will sometimes. But, you know, a lot of times they'll just ignore them or pretend they don't exist, which is what they've been doing this entire primary. The media has to come with the reality that maybe this isn't the guy that you want representing the Democratic Party this coming uh, election. And so maybe you might have to acknowledge that there are people that are actually challenging them. And usually when you ignore those people, they tend to do better than you would expect. Ignoring something and omitting information, which is what the media constantly does. In fact, they do it more than they do it more than they actually lie or at least exaggerate a lot of times. They'll just omit information. They'll they'll purposely leave things out or ignore things. Just so they can't be like, oh, well, we're not lying to you guys. It's it's not a lie. We're just, we, we didn't know that this was, uh, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Come on. It's so funny because there have been so many other presidential candidates or presidents themselves that have actually fallen over. For example, Bob Dole fell over when he was <laughs> waving to people on stage and he said he was doing the Macarena. Gerald Ford slipped once and he got endless... You got endless teasing from the media, SNL. I mean, Chevy Chase, literally a big part of his uh, skits on SNL was making fun of Gerald Ford. That was one of his characters, and that's what made him you know, so funny back then. Which, I mean, yeah, it was funny, but this is – we got to be honest here. This is never something they would do to Biden. Let's be honest. SNL wouldn't go as far as they would with Trump. I remember when Trump was walking down steps rather gingerly. Oh, man, the late night comedians, the media, they were just like, oh, this, oh, they, they couldn't get enough of it. Biden, every other day, will shake hands with ghosts, wander around on stage, slur words constantly, and will fall over on bikes, this, this, and that on stage, and nothing but cricket sounds. They'll show great concern for our president. Now, let's be honest, this dude is going to be... 86, which is well over the average death age for the average American. 
I mean, he looks bad now. Can you imagine what he's going to look like by the end of this decade? Because that if he runs again, well, he is, and if he gets elected again, which I'd say he's actually the favorite right now. I mean, if you put these two, him and Trump, head-to-head, Trump's up, up ahead big in the polls, then, yeah, it looks like he's most likely, I mean, we're pretty much going to end up with the same exact revolt result that we did a couple years ago. Trump is going to lose by a rather thin margin, and Biden's going to win, and we're stuck with this for the rest of the 20. So that'll be fun to look forward to. So Joe Biden um, has the entire backing of the press, which he has had his entire career, especially within these last few years. His, His pitch in 2020 was, Everything is so insane. Everything is so crazy. We got this this crazy, evil, orange guy in the White House, and we must do something about him. This is just terrible. You know what? We're going to return to normalcy. It's a return... Oh, I got low power. Sorry. It's a return to normal... A a Warren Harding-esque return to normalcy. We're going to do this again. And so... By the way, Warren Harding died about two and a half years into his presidency. Joe, that could still happen to Joe Biden, God forbid. Joe Biden, he, like I said, he's got a pack. He, his, bleh, his pitch was Trump is insane. I'm going to bring us back to normal. He killed so many people with COVID. I'm going to stay away from the press. I'm going to make Trump the center of attention, which he did pretty successfully, and he won. He, the thing is, he is doing the same exact thing that he did, and his slogan is, finish the job, we're gonna finish the job, man, (laughs) and that, that's his pitch, because, and if you look, if you look at it, the actual ad that he ran last month, it's like, oh, you know, it's the, it's the classic kumbaya shit that really, that most candidates run with, they're like, oh, if only we were, we were just together, we were united, oh, it would be so wonderful, when it doesn't even address, the f- doesn't even talk about your vision, all it, all it is is just the kumbaya, we're singing together, it's so fun, we're skipping in the meadow, we're picking daisies, it's a wonderful thing, no, we're gonna, you can't, you need to touch on policy in your vision, when you're talking about running from, he doesn't talk about any policy issues, Biden, that is, really, at all, since he's announced he's going to run for president, and that's because the media is so behind him. And once again, I mean, one of the, his entire pitch is, he's not Trump, and that he's going to, he's going to save, demo, he's going to save democracy. Well, I don't understand how he's say, I mean, he, I mean, Trump, I'd say is certainly more of a, I guess a threat to actual violence because we literally saw people rioting on January 6th, but it's not like Joe Biden is this uniting figure like Barack Obama was, or at least tried to be sometimes. Uh, Biden pretty much is just saying, yeah, democracy dies in darkness with Trump and I'm not Trump. So elect me. That's it. But the thing is, that might not work in 2024 because he is now the president. He has to defend the policies that have affected Americans. And if you look at his approval ratings, it's not great. I mean, throughout most of his presidency, he has been around the 40 percent or 45 percent mark. That happens to, I'd say, most presidents. You know, they fall into that line, but they quickly recover. Uh, Trump was a lot throughout um throughout his uh, presidency, and, you know, we saw that. He ended up losing the election amongst plenty of other things. But the thing is, Biden is not Trump. He's not crazy like Trump, and this is definitely going to be a a lot about policy, as it was with the Trump administration. Um, You know, of course, there's also the added factor that Trump is the uh, orange orangutan that we see on Twitter all the time and, you know, pretty much everywhere. But nonetheless... He, Biden, if he if he is going to win, he has to defend his policies. Assuming if he goes up against DeSantis, he certainly will. And I, I think he's going to have to against Trump. But you know, like I said, with Trump, Trump is Trump. Okay. Okay. Now I think it's only right that I actually take a look at his campaign ad that he's got going on here. 
and really break it down and review it briefly just so you guys get an idea of what he's actually running on. Because the right thing to do is, like I've been repeating throughout this video, you need to run on a, you need to run on your vision. What are you gonna do? What have you done so far? How are you gonna fix it? And he's not doing that. Alright, let, let's watch this. Starting. Oh my god, this is loud. Okay. Freedom. Freedom, yay. Personal freedom is fundamental to who we are as Americans. Okay. There's nothing more important, nothing more safe. This is three minutes. That's been the work of my first term, to fight for our democracy. This shouldn't be a red or blue issue. To protect our rights, to make sure that everyone in this country is treated equally, and that mm -hmm. everyone is given a fair shot at making it. Okay. But you know, oh, around the country, no. my extremists six. are lining oh, up to the take mega the bedrock freedoms. Cutting Social Security that you've paid for your entire life extreme. while cutting that taxes for the very wealthy. Dictating what health care decisions women can make. I mean, those books, are all fair points, honestly. And telling people who they can love. All okay, let me just pause it here. For you to um, I mean, honestly, a few of those are actually some pretty fair. Let me turn this up because I don't know if y'all can hear me. Um. Okay, sorry. I had to turn this down because the video was loud and now I gotta turn my mic up. I'm not sure exactly how this is gonna come out because I, I don't think I've ever played a video while I've had my mic on, but nonetheless. He's, these are some pretty good points about the other side, about specifically the MAGA extremists that you see on the right-wing party. You know, the people that will cut taxes for the rich, that will ban, ban certain books because, you know, they think it's protecting children. And, you know, those ones, the ones that believe the election was stolen. I mean, those are fair points. But the thing, what you want to do is you don't just want to go after your opponents. You want to also touch upon your, because he is the president right now. It's not like he is, is going to, is going to try and win the office. He's running as president right now. He is responsible for the current state of America. We'll see if he touches upon that. Spoiler, he doesn't. I've watched this before, but I think we should break it down. To be able to vote. When I ran for president four years ago, I said we're in a battle for the soul of America. Mm -hmm. We still are. Still? The question we're facing is whether in the years ahead, we have more freedom or less freedom, more rights or fewer. I know what I want the answer to be, and I think you do too. I don't know. I don't know this if everything is, is as crazy as you wanted it to be. That's why I'm running for re-election. Oh. Because I know America. I know we're good and decent people. Mm. I know we're still a country that believes in respect, and treating each other with dignity. Oh, gee, that no, we're geez. a nation where we give hate no safe harbor. We believe that everyone is equal, that everyone should be given a fair shot to succeed in this country. Thank you for choosing Thank us. You. What have you done so far, dude? Well, every generation of Americans has faced a moment when they have like, to- Like, how are you going to make my life for better, freedom. specifically? Stand how are you gonna make the, right to the people who are super rights. poor lives better? Are they feeling any better right now? And what about our boys over in Afghanistan? They do. Those parents? Wow, so touching. How much did he pay these people? Yeah, buddy. So if you're with me, go to JoeBiden.com and sign up. Let's finish this job. I know we can. Because this is the United States of America. There's nothing, simply nothing we cannot do if we can. Yeah, together. we've done this. We've done this. You did this last time. Ugh. This is the job. Let's finish the job, man. This is, uh, is going to be so good. Uh, uh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Good. Okay. Well, that was just him basically saying, oh, there's nothing we can't do together, man. It's, it's, it's going to be so great. And if we just get along and we're a battle for the soul and it's like, okay, 
Yeah, I, I already told you the talking points, but it's like it's crazy. But if you really want to get to the point where you're like actually trying to act as if you're one of the people, why don't you act like more of a oh, what's the word? A populist. That's it. More of a populist. It doesn't work so much when you're a corporate Democrat. And this is when I speak upon – I'm talking about the primary right now because Williamson and RFK, they are not really – they're not being – like I said, they weren't being defended by the media. They're definitely more populist, and I think they're definitely going to take it to Joe Biden if, God forbid, for him, Joe Biden has to debate – which he already said he's not going to, which kind of pisses me off because I – he – this isn't about him. He needs to – listen, he can decide whether or not – he wants to debate or not. That's his decision. You know, I don't, I mean, I personally don't think it should be mandatory, but that doesn't mean I don't think, he, I think he should do it because this isn't about him. It's about all Americans who actually want to see him talk about fucking policy with other candidates who are running against him and who are actually doing pretty well because, because when it comes to the primary, Joe Biden's not doing particularly well, particularly well in the prime of, well, well, he's doing well overall, but for the average uh, incumbent, he's not doing so well. So, and he just, he doesn't talk, he needs to start talking about actual policy. Because once people realize, especially this time around, his actual policy and what it's done to Americans uh, ba- based on stats within the past uh, two years, I don't think it's going to go as well as it would in the Democratic Democratic primary running against somebody like Kennedy or Williamson. That's just what I believe. And the general election, you know, we'll see who he ends up running against. But that's kind of where my mind's at uh, right now. So that's where we stand right now. Um, To sum it up, the media are defending Biden. As always, you can't laugh at the fact that he's senile, the fact that his overall his policies aren't, or at least the majority of them, aren't particularly popular and but you know this end up may not making a difference because the establishment loves him he's not going to have debates he may be running against trump and we've seen that we've done this dance before okay i appreciate all you guys watching uh make sure to leave a like leave a comment if you want to and i'll see you later